No town, no streets. Just a dry stretch of desert. Kupa Piti, white man in a hole, was what the Aborigines called the early prospectors. And they took the name for the region. This lunar landscape is the opal capital of the world. 80% of the world's opals are found here in South Australia, on the fields of today's Cooper Pedy. But the first gems were discovered quite by chance. In 1915, J.R. Hutchinson and three companions were looking for gold. They traveled with six camels across the drought-stricken outback. They didn't find any gold, but Hutchinson's 14-year-old son, William, stumbled on something else. Opals. Opals radiate an iridescent light, a rainbow of colors inside a stone. They are not just valuable, but exquisite. And in the loveliest, a fire glows deep within. Somehow, the colors of the opal transform the dry and dusty Cooper PD into a home. For those who don't mind a life of hard labor, of earth and heat and dust. The men who meet on the opal fields of Cooper PD are as rough as the stone for which their hearts beat. Men like Will Black, Bob Wright, Rick Wilson, Jack Cannell, and old Willie Guff. They are a team welded together by one thing, opal fever. And this barren landscape is their world. Here they own a joint mine, the Dead Horse Valley, 1,000 square yards of prospecting rights in the middle of opal country. The license costs only $150 a year but what they're buying is a dream. I think we're all here as gamblers. We're miners, but we're gamblers, you know? I mean, life's a gamble anyway. Well, we all live on that dream, don't we, that maybe tomorrow's a big day, you know? <laughs> Everybody's got that dream, eh? <laughs> but every stain, every stain you find is different, and I like the colours and the patterns and all that, you know? That's what really keeps me here. Dawn on the fields of Cooper Pedy. A new day, a new chance for the hunters of the stone. Like so many others, this day begins with the roar of the diesel, with dust and dirt. For Rick and his friends, hard work and tough conditions are all part of the game. But it's a dangerous game. For here on the minefields of Cooper PD, the risks are all around. Every step must be carefully considered. Underfoot are explosives and 100 foot mine shafts. In the darkness, many a shaft entrance has become a tomb. And every time the miners descend into the depths on a wobbly, rusty ladder, they never know if they'll be coming back. Down under the earth, the men burrow like moles. These tunnels were blasted out by dynamite. They could collapse at any time, but danger comes with the territory. Down here, everything is impromptu, jerry-rigged. They make it up as they go along. The miners are constantly drilling new holes for explosives, pushing their tunnel deeper and deeper into the ground. Up above, Bob makes the dynamite charges by hand. 
It's a makeshift little package, but potent. All their ends in, tuck them in. Down in there, like that. They snip off about, about an inch. The white powder, that's the explosive. This handmade little bundle will blast right through solid rock. In Dead Horse Valley, blasting takes place every day. None of the miners are explosive experts. They just learn as they go. But they've been lucky up to now, unlike some of the others in the region. We had a couple of accidents last week out on the 14 mile and that, you know, and bloke's stupidity within themselves, you know. You've got to leave pillows. People will see opal, and all of a sudden you get this vertical or a trace and they realise they've got this pillow. You must leave pillows, and um, if you don't, that ground, you dig underneath it, and just bring the whole roof down. There's no warning, it's just one big thud, quick. And I mean, you just hear wham, thud. After the explosions come other dangers, poisonous fumes. If you've got no blower, you put a set of shots in, you've probably, got, you've probably got to wait a while for the fumes to clear. But with a blower, you can, bla you can blast, and then you have your blower going, sucks all the fumes out, and you can work straight away, more or less. The blower is a giant vacuum cleaner. It sucks up huge lumps of rock as if they were breadcrumbs. The powerful suction pulls the debris up through the pipes, all the way up to the surface. Above ground, Will and Rick take care of the diesel pump and generator which power the blower. These are the two most important pieces of equipment, and they are constantly on the verge of breaking down. And nothing is more difficult than getting hold of spare parts in the Australian outback. The desert is littered with the shells of automobiles, stripped of anything that might be used for the opal hunt. It's a graveyard of cars, remnants rusting away under the scorching sun. Out in this hard land, dynamite is not just a tool to hunt opals. It's also used to solve differences of opinion. This is the remains of an old blower. They had an argument, the company had an argument, and one of the partners blew it up set a couple of bags of nitro pull underneath it and just exploded it. This is all bits and pieces of it lying around here. Rough methods for a rough place. Problems are also caused by the clandestine nighttime visitors to the mines, the night shifters. Do a lot of damage because when we're mining, we mine safely, but when they come in, they just, because they're trying to do it quick, they put a heap of shots in, blow down under the level, and then knock it down, you know, and they make a mess of the mine. They leave the roof dangerous. And... So out here, who protects the mines and miners? Government officials? The police? We are the police. We police our own territory. <laughs> you have to protect your property, yeah, you know, and this is your property, oh, yeah. You know, so, well, if it comes to it, you'd have to shoot it, wouldn't you? Especially, uh, some of them are pretty mean, some of these night shifters, you know, they, they'll try shooting you too. You know, so, you have to be prepared. Come on, boy. The 
men don't work all the time in Dead Horse Valley. Today is one of those days when they try their luck someplace else. They are on their way to the old deserted shafts. Their equipment, as always, the ladder. Will scans the desert floor. The largest opal in the world was found in an abandoned shaft. And it wasn't even covered with dirt. So it's always worth looking. In this wild west, the stakes and the dangers are as high as ever. But the rewards are great. If Bob seems nervous this afternoon, on edge, there's a reason. He has just found a cache of opals, but not in the dead horse mine. Back at his camp, he agrees to show us his find. Look at that, brother. Yeah. Three thousand bucks an ounce. Three thousand. Ah, oh, that's only a sample. Look at that. Huh? Top quality. Look at the quality in that. That's what all the opal buyers want to buy. Eight mile. Eight mile opal. Bob owns a small private mine behind his dugout. He works it with the help of Jack and Old Willie. This is where he discovered the opals. And he still hasn't gone through the entire find. The process will take most of the afternoon. Bob puts the loose rock into the centrifuge, which separates opals from sandstone. The machine will turn for two hours, removing the sandstone, while Bob waits and hopes. And finally, it's time to clean the stones once again and see if there are a few more opals to be retrieved from the pan. This is a lucky day for Bob. Opals. This is what all the dangers are for, the result of all the hard work. Opals are just spherical particles of the mineral silica, but the more perfectly aligned these particles, the more brilliant the color. Like all opal hunters, Bob always says it's not the value of the stones that fascinates him, but their beauty. Of course, once he's got opals, he has only one thing on his mind. I got business, business, brother. Business. Sorry. Yeah. Right. I, 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 like, I like picking out opal. Stay me. <laughs> but when you turn round, I got forty percent, and you want to cut me fifteen percent off to cover th th two or three hundred dollars or oh, hundred dollars of bloody expenses. It's a fucking different story, Bob. Twenty percent off hey, my fuck. fucking view. Yeah. Get what are you, what stuff, are you Bob. Oh, I don't right. want to fucking know oh, you. Right. Know you, you can stuff your fucking heart, open up your fucking ass. No, no, no. I don't no. want to know, Bob. What do you get? I don't care what I fucking get, you greedy bastard. No, I'm not when money is involved, you even know, friends can become you rivals. Know, For Bob and John, the search is always more fun than the business. 
But sooner or later, when things cool down, they can sit down together, have a few beers, and put it all behind them. Uh, Willie's going to explain. I'm wrong, not you. No, no, so no, wait a minute, John. Oh, um, John? Yeah, which two? Hey. And so, in the end, oh, harmony is restored in Dead Horse Valley. Hey. Hey. That. And Bob's rough opals, they're on their way to Yanni Athanasiades. Yanni is one of the best-known opal dealers and cutters in Cooper PD. Over the years, he's handled a lot of gems and seen a lot of opal hunters come and go. In, uh, in opal mining, perhaps um, it could happen to anybody at any time. Uh, today, you are broke, uh, you don't have uh, money even to buy cigarettes, tomorrow you may have a lot of hundreds of thousands of dollars in your pocket. Uh, it, you only need to find the right place to dig this beautiful stone out, and it's very easy then. The best opals will be found tomorrow. That's the motto of everyone out here. And I did get the opal fever. Um, well, uh, since, uh, since that day uh, that I got involved in opals, uh, that's, my, that's my life. Uh, opal, it's my life, uh, the last 25 years. Uh, I don't know to do anything else. A life in Kubrapidi, a life for the stone. Kubrapidi is a very nice place to live. Um, you make very good friends. Uh, people are very, very friendly. Um, a newcomer in Kubiti will feel at home uh, after a few days. Uh, everybody, everybody is welcoming people uh, in Kubiti, and it is a different place. More than 60 nationalities live in Kubiti, and many of them live underground. Even the Christian Orthodox Church on the hill is carved out of the rock in a so-called dugout. There are some very beautiful houses. From outside especially, you don't see a dugout uh, very much. Uh, you really have to go inside. From outside, it looks like uh, a hill with one door. You go inside, there are some beautiful homes. One day, everybody comes back. We have people that are coming back to Kubiti after years and years just to try once more. Like the old timers, even though they long ago buried their dream of a great find, still they return to Cooper Pedy to spend the evening of their lives here. Or like the professionals who want to try their hand one more time in Cooper Pedy to see whether technical sophistication is luckier than dynamite and a pick. Sidney Absalom is working with a high-tech machine which carves its way through the earth precisely and efficiently. He works his way down, 20 yards a day, every day. The tons of loosened stones fall directly onto a conveyor belt and are transported upwards to an elevator. But for all the machinery, Sidney knows it's his own senses that are key to the opal hunt. The telltale sound of crunching glass, the taste, the feel of the stone, any of these might indicate the presence of opal traces. No color in it. No color. That's an opal line there. Yeah. Only bony pot, matrix bony pot. But 99 out of 100 holes don't contain opal, just dirt. At the shaft entrance above ground, a new heap is growing. And wherever there's a heap, 
there are men like Kevin Wilson, men they call the noodlers. Kevin works with the dirt others have cast off. He feeds it into a hopper where it is funneled inside. In a darkened cabin under ultraviolet light, Kevin's wife removes the opals, which show up white. Everyone in Cooper PD is looking for treasure. Everyone has a dream. And Cooper PD has enough space for all of them. Of course, some people will discover opals, some won't. But everyone who comes here finds something else, a wide open way of life. Here, you can live any strange way you want. And they've got the interior decorating to prove it. The people of Cooper PD seek freedom and the desert gives it to them. The attraction of this hard, empty land is precisely its emptiness. Out here, there are no bosses, no social obligations, just an endless horizon. Even in death, the residents of Cooper PD thumb their noses at convention. This tombstone reads, have a drink on me. Freedom. It's freedom, you know, not like the city where you have to be up at nine o'clock in the morning and home at five o'clock at night, you know. Here, if you want a couple of days off, you just take a couple of days off. How many days? Oh, you can take as many as you like. You know? This rough freedom, wild and a little crazy on the godforsaken opal fields. And once a week, on Saturdays, the opal hunters leave the holes and the tunnels behind and come out to the track to exchange the thrill of the colored stone for the thrill of high-speed racing. And up there, all is away that place. Now we're out in second position now with Peter Whitehead. And up... when the last lap has been run, the miners wash the dust out of their lungs with a few beers and a few songs. <laughs> it's great to be in Cooper Pady. Here's a song that sort of... Boredom in the outback, not in Cooper Pady. It's a good sing-along, so I want you to all sing along with this one, right? This song was recorded in England and would sound like this. Each day here brings something different. Hope, disappointment, and perhaps the overwhelming sight of an opal that glows like the setting sun. As another day ends and evening falls on the fields of Cooper Pedy, silence is rare. The engines here run around the clock. The machines are still working even while the miners sleep. The hunt for opals, it never stops. We always pray for that magic day, brother. Every, it could be just beyond an inch of that dirt. You know, you pick away. You make opal, then it'll come, and then it'll disappear quick as it comes. And then, bang, you can just add that magic stone. That, that magic stone can be that size, a million bucks. At Cooper PD, it's all just one sunrise away. That magic day, that magic opal, the fire in the stone. No town, no streets, just a dry stretch of desert. Koopa Piti, white man in a hole, 
was what the Aborigines called the early prospectors, and they took the name for the region. This lunar landscape is the opal capital of the world. 80% of the world's opals are found here in South Australia, on the fields of today's Cooper Pedy. But the first gems were discovered quite by chance. In 1915, J.R. Hutchinson and three companions were looking for gold. They traveled with six camels across the drought-stricken outback. They didn't find any gold, but Hutchinson's 14-year-old son, William, stumbled on something else. Opals. Opals radiate an iridescent light, a rainbow of colors inside a stone. They are not just valuable, but exquisite. And in the loveliest, a fire glows deep within. Somehow, the colors of the opal transform the dry and dusty Cooper Pedy into a home. For those who don't mind a life of hard labor, of earth and heat and dust. The men who meet on the opal fields of Cooper Pedy are as rough as the stone for which their hearts beat. Men like Will Black must be carefully considered. Underfoot are explosives and 100-foot mine shafts. In the darkness, many a shaft entrance has become a tomb. And every time the miners descend into the depths on a wobbly, rusty ladder, they never know if they'll be coming back. Down under the earth, the men burrow like moles. These tunnels were blasted out by dynamite. They could collapse at any time, but danger comes with the territory. Down here, everything is in. The point is different, and all like the colours and the patterns and all that, you know, that's what really keeps me here. Dawn on the fields of Cooper Pedy. A new day, a new chance for the hunters of the stone. Like so many others, this day begins with the roar of the diesel, with dust and dirt. For Rick and his friends, hard work and tough conditions are all part of the game. But it's a dangerous game. For here on the minefields of Cooper Pedy, the risks are all around. Every step. Bob Wright. Rick Wilson. Jack Cannell. And old Willie Guff. They are a team welded together by one thing. Opal fever. And this barren landscape is their world. Here, they own a joint mine, the Dead Horse Valley, 1,000 square yards of prospecting rights in the middle of Opal country. The license costs only $150 a year, but what they're buying is a dream. Well, I think we're all here as gamblers. We're miners, but we're gamblers, you know? I mean, life's a gamble anyway. Well, we all live on that dream, don't we, that maybe tomorrow's a big day, you know? Everybody's got that dream, eh? But every stone, every stone 